Hey quilters, how are you today? It's Mary Ann Fontana and this project is my double wedding ring. Never made one before and I'll warn you I actually filmed this previously and the quilt is made and it's been sent off but I lost the whole front end of my video so I'm just doing a quick um, front so when you drop into how to cut the fabric you won't wonder where the introduction was. I'm making a double wedding ring. It's a queen size. It's going to measure when finished approximately 92 by 118 thereabouts, maybe give or take a few inches depending on my seam allowance. And I am using the Studio Dies uh, from AccuQuilt. Uh, and I have them, they're the exact same ones that you can use in the Go Dies, except mine are individual and they come separate and of course I cut them on the studio. I want to talk to you about fabric. I have used a total of 11 colors. 10 for the main quilt and one for the background color. The Here actually I'll show you a finished, this is my finished ring if you will, the single ring. It is composed of two outside corners, two ends, and then four middle pieces. And we, it'll go through it all in the video. I just wanted to give you a sense of how much you need it um, if fabric wise. Now, if you're using EQ8, you've designed your own, you have yardage, be cautious when you purchase it. According to EQ8, it told me I needed about 10 and a half yards of the background fabric. But by doing some economies and using the AccuQuilt dies, I used under six yards. So I have a lot left over. Anyway, the colors I chose, this is an, like an ice white with a little bit of gray in it. That is my background, and that is one color. And that's what I cut shape A, and the scallop, uh, or the orange peel shape, which is shape B from. For the shape, let's see if we can find it here, D. Uh, and D are the setting corners. I've used a rust and a teal. Uh, in a dark shade. I've taken shape F, which is actually the beginning of the ring, the pieces on either end of the corner because they're a little slightly more slant and they have an angle. And I used a medium tone and I used a gold and a dark tan or a light brown. I then selected six colors for the center, which are all done on shape E, I did six colors, but I only needed four per shape, so you get an assortment of color. I wanted to look a little bit um, just random. I ended up using one yard each of six colors. So if you decide you want to do two colors, you would need three yards of each, if you you know, and so on. But you need six yards. And these are the yeah, these are the six colors that I chose, and it goes from a tan. There's a blue green, a blue gray. A medium blue uh, salmon and a peach color because those were the colors in my niece's rug which is where the inspiration for the colors came from. This is the original double wedding ring design I had decided to do and as you'll see as the video progresses uh, because they actually started out saying I was going to make this I realized that I have a challenge with the border and without giving out why I ended up making it and adding so uh, instead of doing five by seven rings, I did seven by nine. So it was quite an increase in fabric and I'll go through it all. But just to give you totally what you need to cut, shape A, you actually need to cut 63 units and you need about five yards for that. Shape B, which is the same color, you need 142 units, that's additional two and a half yards. Shape D, which are the teal and the rust I'm using, you will need about a yard of each. You'll have a little bit left over. And you're cutting 142 pieces of each. And shape E, which is the one I bought the six colors for, I purchased one yard of each and I cut 190 of each color, six colors, for a total of 1,140 pieces of shape E. So depending on how many colors you pick, take 1,140, divide it by your number of colors, that's how many of each you have to cut out. And the last one is shape F, which were those anchor pieces I used, the gold and the brown. I cut 140 to each of those. And I also purchased a yard of fabric. So all the colors, all the cornerstones, everything, I bought a yard of each and I was fine. 
and uh, that's it. Uh, the next is going to be some tips on how to cut it out and save a whole bunch of fabric uh, in your cutting process. So here we go. I want to show you how to cut them to get the maximum number of shapes out of a strip. If you watch some of the videos that are out there on cutting with the AccuQuilt, the double wedding ring, they recommend fan folding. I do not because you lose a lot of fabric in the fold. So since I have all the layers, and in this case, let's just assume there's six layers, we're doing a go, and we're going to cut them as we would if we were using the go. And I'm gonna show you how I turn the die back and forth so that you can get maximum uh, number of shapes out of this. I have these strips laid on the die board. Uh, now, if you're using the go, you're going to find the center strip. Uh, this one is an E shape, uh, but it's going to be the middle of the uh, cut rings, and it's going to be pretty much even. It's going to have uh, the tabs on the two sides. Uh, it may have it on the three, but this one only has a two. I always start from the raw edge. The reason being, if I get to the fold and there's a little bit left, I might be able to unfold it and make another shape out of it. So all my pieces are here, all 10 of them, right? Okay, that's what we're going to say. The maximum is 10. And I'm just going to straighten this out a little bit. And I'm going to get as close to that edge as I can and still catch that notch and lay it right like that and hold it. And I'm going to put my, in this case, let's put it this way. And I'm going to go in at an angle because it's easier to cut. Let me go. All right, so let me pull it back through so you can see it. Now, as you see, I have the tail here. This is the rest of the strips. I'm holding this pretty tight so it doesn't fall out, but I'm gonna just fold this so it reduces the stress. Rub it a little, wipe this off, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull my shapes out. And I have a nice stack with all the different colors I'm using. Now, if you notice this here, let's look. One side is straight. Actually, they're both kind of angled, but the point is if I were to turn the dog around or the fabric, and I get ready to cut, the angle now is going in the same direction. Uh, can you see that the angle and this angle are going the same direction, which means I'm gonna have less fabric waste. And I'm gonna move this up just enough again to cover that notch and to make sure I have it covered on the top and the bottom, just so, holding it down, pressing this in place, push, putting it at an angle, and cutting through again. So let's look. I'm gonna come back over, lay these over. Now I'm gonna get another set out. Now, look at how much waste I have between the two. There's hardly anything. Now, when I stack these just as an aside, I'm just gonna stack them opposite so I can keep them separate. It's a good way to keep count. Now I'm going to go to the, I'm going to turn it around again so that the angle again is the same and I'm going to move the fabric just enough so I can get that notch without wasting anything and laying the pieces down, smoothing them out, going at an angle. And I come, now normally if I was doing this and I wasn't on camera, I probably would go back and forth. I would leave the piece over on that side, put it off, take the thing off, and then come back the other way, but I can't keep moving the camera. So anyway, so now I'm gonna take this off. Here's my third set. Okay, and if I'm cutting 10 layers at a time, I've just cut 30 pieces. Now here, again, I have a little piece of strip. That's my waist. Now, if I were to fan fold this, do you know how much I would waste? I bet you I will get, I think I get at least one extra set of shapes in here by doing it this way. And I do, to tell you this, I point it out because fabric is very expensive. And I don't know about you, I like to make a lot of quilts. I'm always sewing stuff and heaven forbid anybody should actually see my stash. I also don't want to waste it. It's expensive, so I try to do the best I can. Oh, that was a good one. You see, and I still have my notches on both sides. So that's just a little trick on cutting, and this is the way I cut everything. If I'm cutting multiple colors, I'll try and lay them all together and then cut them like this in rows, especially if they're angular, because if you flip back and forth, you will save so much fabric. Well, I'm going to finish cutting this, and then we're going to start sewing them together. This is my example. This is my arc. I did cut it a tan and a gold for the sides. It has to be the sides. This is the side piece. 
okay, that has the side here and then the curve. So that has to be on either end and it's actually sewn in this way. You sew to this side, to the straight side and lift the, leave the pointy side out. So I have, and of course, because I've used batiks, there's no left and right, so I couldn't do this wrong. And I'm going to separate the golds and the tans that I had that I previously cut. And I keep them on the die board. And if you have a go die, just set them on top. You can stack them all around to where you need them. And I'm going to separate these. Um, and I'll do a bunch more of those. And I like to do 40 rings at a time. To me, that's a good number to sew. It takes me about an hour. And as I chunk away at it every day I can do some and in four days I'll have all these rings these all sewn together because I need just under I think about 160 was my count 164 so if I do 40 a day um, and since I already did a few test pieces I'll be done in four days with this portion anyway the ones that we just cut I'm keeping stacked because they're variable and the four are going to vary so I'm just going to pull them off and sew them randomly trying not to duplicate any colors in the middle so some will have this coloration um, some may be a little different uh, this one has a light blue and a beige in it and I'm going to randomly sew these pieces together and just get a little different look on each one so it looks very random when the rings are put together. I'm also going to string these together all of them. I'm not going to sew two pieces, then two pieces, then two pieces. I'm going to sew them one at a time all the way down in rows and that's what I'm going to show you next. I always start with a beige or the tan color piece. Um, if you look at the ring, I decided I'm going to have a beige on one side and gold on the other all the time. So I'll always start with a beige one. Now, normally I will do 40 at a time. But for this sewing, um, this demonstration of the video, I'm just going to do five. So you can see the technique that I'm using. I'll keep the colored pieces. And there's the six colors randomly laid out, depending on how I cut them. And I'm just going to start sewing them together. So I'll do five. And then I'm going to do the next row just so you can see how I string them all together, matching up the points. I'm going to make sure I put my foot under to start. And I'm going to go ahead and keep sewing. Oh, got a little piece of thread there. All five of them. Now, if I was doing the 40, I'd be sewing 40 together in a row and not just five. But I don't think you want to sit here watching go through the 40. And it seems silly for me to shut it on and off and on and off. So I'm just going to kind of go through this. So I'm doing five quickly. The first row. Well, you know, I say quickly. I am trying to be precise. I am moving at a good pace, but I'm also watching everything I'm doing. I'm marching up all the pieces. I'm sliding it under. I'm actually, if you notice, I don't sew all the way to the end of the piece of fabric. And the reason I don't do that is because it keeps the foot pedal slightly raised. And that allows me to kind of wedge that under there. Now that was my fifth one. So I'm gonna cut it off. But all I'm gonna do is now I just sewed those together. So I'm gonna pull them back. Let's see if I can back up just a little, there we go. Okay, so all I did is I've got the pieces sewn together and I'm gonna pull them back and I'm gonna open the first one up. And I'm gonna start another row. And I'm gonna take the next piece and I'm going to just put it right on there. I'm gonna lift my presser foot up with my new thread that I just put in. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew the next row. I'm going to open the next one up. Now, keep in mind, these are the four middle ones. The only rule I'm going to have is I don't want to use the same color. So I'm going to flip it over. Well, it's another blue. Let's go to orange. I'll just go ahead and take another piece out randomly. As long as it's not the same color, I don't want to duplicate them. Next to each other, I may do it actually in the ring, just because it's the way it falls. But now, see, this one's orange, so I'll use the green because it's not the same color. And again, the batiks are really cool because there's no right or wrong side. I mean, some sides some are a little more vivid than others, I find. And if I get really weird, sometimes I do try to do only one side, but it just takes too much effort. They're so close looking, it's hard to tell. Now 
All right, I'm down to this last one. And this is blue, so let's take this beige piece here. It's a tan. It's a different tan than the one that's on the outside. If you look, they're two different shades. This is a past, more lighter color. That's a more medium tone. And actually, those corners I did of the rust and teal are a darker tone. All right, so that's the second row of the colors in the middle, the random colors. And then I'm going to pick up my foot and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull all the colors back. I'm going to open this one up and I'm going to add another color. And since I haven't done the peach yet, I'm going to take one of those. And I'm going to place it here. And this is the third row I'm doing. So it's going pretty quick, right? See how fast it is? See, if you had been doing them separately, you'd be putting two together, two together, two together, and then cutting them, and then you have to sew those together, and then it just, I don't know. It seems like it takes an awful long time to do that when you can just do it this way, and it actually helps you because it keeps all the pieces together. They're pre-sewn. You don't have anything extra to do, and you're ready for the next step. And it's not like there's three steps in this section. Let's see what we're going to do. There's actually, let's do that other beige one I found here. Open it up. I did a peach. What else we got here? That's another green. Oh, I'll do a blue. And I just do that. I flip them around sometimes to look to see what other colors there are. And it all works out in the end. I mean, sometimes I may end up with two peaches or something. I don't really care. I just try not to have them touch. And actually, if you look, these are two different color peaches. One's a peach and one's more like a, maybe a salmon. But that's the last piece I have. That was the fifth. So I'll go back up. And guess what? We're already on our fourth row of colors. How quick that went, huh? So what haven't I used up here? Well, there's another blue, I think, in here someplace. Let's see. It's like a blue-gray I haven't used. Here it is. That's a kind of cool color. I'll put that at the end. And I try and even out the color assortment so I'd end up with all one color at the end. I always put my foot pedal down on top. You'll get hot, tired of hearing me say that, but I do. I'm going to take this as a brighter peach. Okay, so I'm just setting them. Marking them, see it just lines up. You know, when you cut them with the dies, obviously it's so easy. And there's a peach, so what should we do? Oh, let's do the blue. I haven't seen a blue one on here. Oh, no, yeah, blue. I was gonna take the tan, but then I saw I had another tan. And this is just how I do it. And open this up. And maybe I'll do the tan now. And the peach, and let's do that darker color. I kind of like that one. You know what, I'm gonna do the green. I know you think I'm crazy, but I always end up with a lot of green at the end, and then I wonder why. So let's intentionally use the green. And cut it off. Now, I've done four of the multicolor rows, so that is done. See how easy it is to sew this together? So I have four rows done. I'm just going to open them. I don't have to open them now. I can open them later. And now what do I have to do? We're going to get rid of all of these. That section's done, and I have to do the gold on the end, and then these are finished. Is that easy or what? The gold. Now, obviously, you don't have to do what I did. You could do seven random color. I mean, six random colors as opposed to the same color on either end. But I just made a decision because I felt the gold and the tan were darker than the others, so I wanted to set them apart like it was intentional. So when you look at the ring, you don't see oh a gold spot here and a dark tan spot there because they're a different value. So I've used all the light values in the middle. I've used the medium values, which I call in the gold and the tan, on either end. And then when I do those setting squares that I have to sew on to some of these arcs next, those are going to be dark colors. So I've kind of made a, a decision on hue, I guess, or value on how I've placed these colors I purchased. 
And I actually have an extra one here, so get rid of that. And then here is the last one. I've just done five. You watched me. And it's taken me six and a half minutes. I'm going to go now to the board and show you. Right, this is what we just took off the sewing machine. How easy is that? Huh? Look at that. All I have to do now is, and I emphasize the word carefully, cut these apart. Just the threads. Don't cut your fabric. One, two. I've cut the sewn these really close. If you leave a little bit of space, sometimes you can cut a couple of them at the same time, but don't try and be too fast. I know I like this speed thing, but you know, at some point you've got to be careful because you don't want all your work to be cut. So I just cut them. And as easy as that, I've just made five of the arcs, just like that. Now I'm going to go make 35 more because I'm trying to do 40 each day. And when they're all done, we're going to go on to the next step, which is going to be sewing these darker colors to either side. And I haven't decided. I'm going to do them all the same, but I haven't decided if I'm doing teal on the I left or the right. The arcs. I actually didn't do 40. I did all 164. Now what I have to do is divide them in half. And so I have taken 82 or so, if I've counted correctly. And I'm going to now sew those next two squares onto each side of half of the total number of arcs. And it was 164, so I have 82. I'm going to add those extra two pieces too. I'm going to go down to the design board and just lay it out and see if I remember the way I decided to do it before. Okay, here are the arcs, and as we talked, this is all gold, this is all the, uh, the brown, the light brown. And I have to sew uh, one of each of these to half of the arc. So this is half the arcs, and these have little notches on them. And I believe we decided to put the blue on the gold side and the rust on the brown. And if not, that's, I think, what I'm going to do. And I'm only going to put them on half. And just to kind of give you a sense of why I'm doing that, let's, can you see good? Yeah, it's right here. Good. Okay, so this is here, and that's going to be sewn on. And then you're going to, this piece is going to go in here. And then let's pretend this is one of the other arcs. So this is really what you're going to sew together. So we're going to then sew this to this. And then we're going to sew, this will be attached, and we're going to sew this in here. And then we're going to have 82 of those when we're done. That's the plan. But first I'm going to put these on. So let's go to the sewing machine, and I'll sew some of those up and let you look at them. I'm going to do the rust side first only because that's the way I laid these pieces out. And I don't know if you can see, I have all my arcs all over here and I have them in two stacks. I don't think I'm gonna do them all at once, but I'm gonna try and do one stack at a time. I think one has 40 and the other has 40 whatever. Um, so, now this has little points on all sides, so I guess it doesn't really matter. We're gonna just sew it like this straight. And of course I'll have to turn my curve and it is on the straight though yeah, if you look see it's straight okay but this looks curved so it looks kind of weird I'll pick up my presser foot oh, I'm gonna just adjust my stitch length and just make sure it matches up and I'm gonna pick up another one I try and chain as much as I can. It saves thread. I know it sounds silly, but every time you take a couple, you cut it, you lose two, three inches of thread. We're sewing hundreds of these by the end of the day, so it's hundreds of inches. You know, so it does add up, I guess. You know, yards and yards and yards. And I really like the batiks because they go either way. Meaning, you know, right side up. Um, it's 
did another one. I got confused there. I looked and I saw a gold and I go, gold's not supposed to be on this side, but it had folded back. All right, so this is it. This is all I have to do. Let's look at them. I did four. We only have 80 or so to go. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just sewing it on like that. Simple as that. And when I'm done with this side, we'll turn around and we'll put the teal on the other side. All right, so I'm just gonna continue chaining and I'll be back with you uh, when I'm done. This is my last one that I'm doing in the group. I ended up doing half of them, I guess, which was about 40 or 42 or so. I don't always count, but I find if I do it in groups rather than trying to do them all at one time, I don't get wiped out. Now, these are still all chain pieced together, so I'm just going to kind of pull them through, holding on to the rust side, which is where the string is. I'm hoping not to get them all tangled. But, you know, if they do, I'll just cut them apart as I go. And my goal here is just to really flip them around because now I'm going to switch my colors out and I'm going to go up the other side with this dark teal color. So I just really wanted to get started and show you. So I do have my whole string together so far. So they're all here. I've got them like on the table. I don't want them on the floor. I don't want to run over them with my chair. And also it pulls down on you. And so I'm just going to repeat and I'm going to put the blue. I'm matching those notches up if I didn't mention it. One of the really neat thing about the Aki Quilt dies is they put notches, especially on the curved pieces. So you really know what the correct placement is. And if you've got that quarter inch foot or a seam guide or something, you are golden and they will come out very good. So here we go. And I like to stop and I'm actually pulling the next one up. These are still chained together. And at this point they kind of help feed themselves in because they're attached. So I'm not going to um, cut them at all. And besides it saves time. And if anybody knows me and they've watched my videos, you know, I always like to say I have a need for speed. I want to do things quickly, but I want them to look really good and professional. That's like this chain piecing of these is really good because probably cut your futzing time down in half. Futzing is the word. Like, you know, playing with it, getting the fabric in the right way, the shape. And, you know, this, they're all lined up and there's no heck. I haven't ironed anything either. I haven't pressed or ironed. Um, I don't really need to at this point. It doesn't change my ability to sew the seams and match the notches. So I'm just going to continue taking pieces. And it's as easy as this. Put it against the notch. Put them down. Straighten it out. Quarter inch seam. Go another one. Then we'll look at a few of them. And right now, it's not much to look at. It's just going to be a bigger curve. All right, so I'm going to just undo it for now. And pretty much, let's see if we can get this here. There's our larger curve right there. Let's back up a little. That's about as far as I can back up. Anyway, there's the dark, there's the light. And they're all kind of holding hands. You know, and if it gets too unwieldy, you just cut them off and put them on the side and uh, do some more. So I'm going to finish all of these. I'm working on this. This strand is 40. And I'm going to do the other 40. And I'll come back and we'll start sewing the curves to that orange peel shaped white background piece. I have a lot to share uh, since you last saw me sewing those little arcs. Uh, I do have them all sewn. I have half them without the blue and the rust and the other half that I sewed two ends on, uh, which I showed you last. I believe there's 84 of each. The next step is we're going to sew 
the orange peel shape. Let's see if we can find you. Here it is. We're going to use the orange peel shape and we're going to sew it onto the strip that does not have the two dark colors sewn on the edge that we just finished. We're going to take the other ones that we haven't done anything else to except, you know, sew that group together. We're going to sew these on and I'm going to walk you through. We're going to show you. Now, I've sewn it both ways with the orange peel on top and with the curved drip on top. And I'm going to show you my The other thing I wanted way. to share is that I recently got a new embroidery machine. Now all of a sudden I want to embroider everything. Um, and I've decided to take this shape and embroider a quilting motif in the middle. So this way when I throw it on the long arm, that center will be just done and I can just kind of go around it and look like I did a really amazing job. I've chosen this pattern. Now, I'm not going to do it in this color, but you wouldn't see it. I'm actually going to do it in it. It's almost a light, 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 light greenish beige that I'm going to use. But this is the pattern I'm going to use. I figured and I thought make, it would make use of my embroidery machine since I have it. That's why I bought it. Uh, and you can do it too or not. Just do it without it. That's the way I would normally do it and then quilt it myself later on. Or if, you know, you choose, you would send it out to quilt it. Down to the sewing machine, we're going to sew orange peels onto the curved strips. I have my orange peels here, and I do have the strips set on the side. I have them all ready to go, and I have the inside curve towards the foot plate. In this case, it's got the brown piece on the top. I'm always going to sew them the same way. Now, I know there are many people who are proponents of pinning, and they say you must pin profusely. I do not pin at all. I find they get in the way. I find they shift. I find if you don't pin them precisely, it ends up just, you know, making it, I guess, less easy rather than more easy. Um, I did sew some this way with the piece on top and curved them. But I found I was little, got little folds. So I've decided I like it better with curve in, right sides on the top. This will be the right side down. Now these are just so identical. They're almost white. It's like an ice white. Anyway, let's move in a little. Let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to place the piece. Now look, can you see? Let's just get over here. Oops, sorry. I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting it flat. Let's keep it in the light. Flat against this piece. And this is curving that way and that's going that way. And that notch has to match up to that seam. The first thing I want to do is make sure I have the fabric positioned. So I'm going to lift my foot plate up and have my presser foot on my fabric and I'm going to take three stitches. You can take two, you can take four, don't take a lot. And I leave my needle down. Now I'm going to back up just a little, okay, because I want you to be able to see the notch. Here's the notch. Here's the seam. Now, I'm going to take this and pull it slightly, not pull it so you don't want to yank at the seams. You don't want to pull the threads out, but I'm going to put that right there on that seam line. See that? And I'm going to hold it with my finger. And now if you look, I'll pull this back a little. This is almost perfectly curved. Look at that. So I'm going to hold this piece and I'm going to sew to that. And I'm going to look, and I can see that seam there, so I know it's right there hugging it. I'm going to keep sewing. Now, as you get closer, if you want to just adjust it so it's a little straighter, you can. And I stop right where that notch is and the seam line. The seam line is here. Yeah. Now I'm going to take this piece and straighten it out. And I'm going to take this other flat piece and match it up. And I'm going to hold my finger there. And I'm going to kind of straighten it out. Now if you look, it curved. Now you can 
play with it a little bit here, but I don't have to sew it all at once. In fact, sometimes at this point, you might want to just adjust your foot plate a little so you can take advantage of the curve. Now, this is actually perfectly curved if you can see it. There's the piece. And if I go like this, I have it just to here, it's perfect. Stop. And I'm just pulling here to make this sit where I want. But make sure it's not going too far. You have to be able to catch it. See, it's right there. But they almost just, they almost position themselves. Now I'm gonna switch my finger and put it here so you can see. Let me just pull that out a little, okay. And I've just sewn the curve seam. Let's look at it. Let's see if I get a little more light over here. Okay, pick it up. And this is it. Now what I really want it to be is make sure I have that side fairly good and this side. So, and it's a little dark on the screen, I apologize. But there you go. Okay, let's do another one. Set it down. Take the piece. At this point, it doesn't matter which is right side or wrong side. Match it up perfectly right there at the end like you're sewing a flat piece. Set it under the foot plate. Well, let's get our thread back there too while we're at it. Take three stitches, stop, needle down, straighten this out, put your point there, put your finger on it, take a look. And what you can do is at this point, you know, you can just kind of play with it a little if you're not sure. Now that's perfectly aligned, so I'll just sew to that point. You know, you don't have to do it all at once. And I'm gonna look, I like the way that both of those look, so I'm gonna be brave. All right, I'm chickened out. I'm gonna just move. I wanna make sure this is okay. Yep, that looks actually great. All right, so now as we did, we're gonna take this piece and straighten it out. You can push it back there because you'll straighten it all out. The key is to get this piece positioned correctly right there. Flat side to flat side and hold it. And now if you look at this, this thing is just curving all by itself. Let me just make a little adjustment. Make sure you're keeping your, oh, let's just see. I'm getting an error on my machine for some reason. Let's just see if it'll fix itself. No, I'm gonna have to shut it off. Okay, right. hey, we're back where I left off. I haven't done anything except fix the machine, turn it off, turn it on. Now this actually is quite curved nicely, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it. Let's do one more. I'll just keep piecing them together. I can chain them. Let's get those two pieces here. Match it up. See that right there? And I'll just slide in. This foot plate's still raised a little because the other piece is still in there. So I'm gonna, one, two, three. Okay, I'm in. And turn it. Put the point right there and hold it with your finger and just look underneath. And you can just do one section at a time. If you see, oh, that looks really great to that seam, just sew to the seam. Always try to sew to a seam though, because then it doesn't look wonky. All right, that looks really good. I'm gonna go to that seam. And I'm gonna go to this corner, right to that notch and stop. Always try and stop on a seam line if you can. If not, just do your best to not be too wobbly. All right, so I have my finger set. I'm gonna pull it this way a little bit and pick up this piece just to see how it's doing and it looks really good. And I'm gonna keep going. Okay, I'm gonna do one more without talking. I'm just gonna kind of pretend you're not there and I'm just sewing so you can kind of see more real life than stop and go.
And that is how you attach the half. Now this looks like it's got a pinch here. It really doesn't, you know, it's just kind of where I stopped and the fabric is a little weird. But when I press it, they will all press beautifully and you will press them to the center. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach the long piece which has that rust These and the blue the pieces. that we added. They're done. All the half moons, or the orange peel, have been sewn on and I pressed them all. Uh, now, if I didn't mention it before, I've pressed all these seams just in one direction. I am not spending hours opening those seams. I just can't do it. So I pressed them all to one side and then I pressed all of these in and they look decent. Yeah, I'll show you a couple more. You know, not bad. I will tell you, I've jumped ahead a little. I had to practice, make sure I knew what I was doing before I demonstrated it. And I sewed some of the orange and teal pieces together. I've made about 10, and I'm gonna show you some of them here. They weren't bad to do. Some of them are better than the others. This one's not perfect. If you look, I'm going to show you, see the way that seam doesn't match there. So these are my first attempts, and the seam is a little off there. But I feel that by the time you get them all sewn together, and everybody's looking at they're not going to notice a few of them because the colors also kind of blend, and you really can't tell they don't match, although some of them are better than the others. But I'm okay, and I am not going to redo them. And I'm going to show you, now you notice I'm getting better. Okay, now I've been, this is, you know, after four or five into it, I've started to improve my technique. So uh, I'm going to be able to show you the improved technique way of doing it, or at least the way that makes them a little bit better of a match. So down to the sewing machine we go. I know if you can see over here, I have my pieces lined up. I have my half moons, and I have the pieces with the rust and the teal. Now I'm going to put the long strip with the tail and the rest on the bottom. And I'm actually going to flip these all over because that's the way I have to sew them. Why flip them once, each one 70 times? I'll just flip them all at one time. Actually, that one doesn't look like it's sewed well. I'm going to go back and fix that one. I found the easiest way to do it is do three different sections, if you will. And I'm going to move in a little closer. First thing I did is I sewed the go the end strip with the notch to the rust strip with the knot in the rust shape and i line them up as though that was the only thing i was sewing with my presser foot and i sewed to the seam and when i got to the seam i put my needle down exactly on the seam i'm on the seam now I'm going to proceed the way I did when I sewed the other half. I'm going to take this notch and I'm going to match it to the middle seam. Just the same exact way I'm going to turn the fabric. I'm going to get the notch right on that seam. I'm going to put my finger on it and I'm going to give a little tug. Now I'm going to lift the presser foot because sometimes when you turn the fabric it still gets caught there. Now this actually looks pretty good. See this? See the way that's curved around? That's actually just curved for me. Let's see if we get a little closer. Yeah, look, I haven't done anything and it's already turned. So if I lift the presser foot up, it kind of, sometimes it'll relieve the fold there. So I'm going to sew. Now I can actually go all the way to the end, but I don't trust myself. So I'm going to go, oh, see, it slipped a little. So I'm going to go back, just put my, and the idea is I got to be turning too. But it's actually pretty close. And I'm going to, Grab this piece here and sew to that notch. See, okay, needle down. Notice this is still turned this way. All I did was worry about the first half. Now I'm gonna worry about the second half and I'm gonna ignore the teal piece and I'm only gonna sew to this gold seam here between the teal and that because this is like the end piece we added and this isn't long enough anyway. So I'm gonna lift my presser foot just so I could turn it a little get the fabric a little more in line. And then I'm gonna match up this seam and that seam. And it's actually gonna be a little bit of a cross, but I'm gonna eyeball one quarter of an inch. Oops, sorry, you can't see it, but let me back up a little. So 
let's go back. I'm going to ignore this teal one for a moment. And I'm going to sew to this seam and I'm going to sew it to this seam right here. And so my goal is to nail a quarter of an inch here and there together and get them to somehow meet as a point. And so I'm going to just, now keep in mind the way we placed it before. So you're almost kind of turning it and I'm going to let it cross a little kind of looking at it and going, yeah, that kind of looks like a quarter of an inch and I'm going to hold my finger there. Now this looks like a hot mess, but it's okay. I'm just going to give a little tug to the back and I'm going to pull this one and lo and behold, it straightens out. It's kind of like magic. And I'm going to just move this over just a little and I can sew almost a perfect arc right now. Look at that. Now I'm going to stop exactly on that seam. And then I'm going to, just for now, lift my foot pedal up, my uh, foot plate up, and I'm going to turn the two pieces, and I'm going to line up that notch. Okay, here, and you can just, you know, if it's a little off, it's fine. Put my foot plate down. It is a little off. Let's see, okay, so let's just straighten it, and you know, for that fraction of it quarter of an inch I'm fine. Don't forget you have a quarter inch seam allowance anyway. Actually I think it matched up pretty good. So let's see how we did. Alright first thing I'm going to do is just back up just a little so we get a little better view and I'm going to open it. Alright let's look. Let's look here. Yeah. Okay so well, actually, that's a pretty good one. You can see. Boom, right there. I guess my eyeball's getting better. Uh, but not so much on that side. But you know what? It's pretty close. No one's ever going to see it. It's just like from here to there. Uh, but anyway, so that's one. Now, I already did 10 practicing, so I only have 73 or so to go. So let's do another one. All right, orange at the top, teal at the bottom. It's really just so it's the inside curve. Whatever colors you're using, it's the inside curve, and it's the one with all the pieces that you're going to put at the bottom, and you're going to use that orange peel, half moon shape again. But we're going to first match the gold on the end to the notch on this one, these two notches. Put it under the foot plate. Presser foot. I don't know. I keep calling it foot plate. I guess it doesn't matter. Make sure I'm kind of lined up over there. And just sew to that seam. Leave your needle down in the seam. Boom. Now I'm going to just turn it and match that notch up to that middle one and hold my finger in place. Here. That actually is pretty good. I don't mind it at all. The curve is great. I'm going to go. Now, I'm actually watching where that little notch is. It's right there. And I'm kind of looking through the fabric. I'm lucky this is kind of sheer to see where the seam is, which happens to be right here, to try to stop right there. So when I turn, now I'm going to go back. Here's the teal. That's the other end I added. I'm going to sew to that seam again, and I'm going to turn this piece. Don't forget, I'm not really doing anything here until I get to this first, and then I'm straightening it out. So I'm going to go right there, crisscross right there. It looks good. Put my finger down. Now, if you have a little bit of a nail, I hold it with my nail. Works really good. If not, you could just use the tip pad of your finger. Look at that, how nice that goes. Can you see that? Look, watch. I'm going to pull it back. It's right there. It's perfectly round. The only thing you have to be careful of is sometimes you get little folds in the back. But if it's rounded enough, it should straighten itself out. And I'm just going to go to there because I can see the gold. And I'm going to just give this a little tug in. And I'm going to switch fingers so you can see. And I'm sewing right to the seam. And then I'm going to turn it. Let's just lift the foot plate up for a minute. And I'm going to turn this, put the notch, put it down, so. And let's look. Okay. 
Okay, again, pretty good. That's what Not I was going to do, I had decided. And I was going to use the uh, border. I was going to make a border. And then I was just going to put some colors in each of the corners for accent. Well, guess what I discovered? AccuQuilt does not make an outside arc, which means they don't have a shape that cuts the outside or this part. In other words, you would need something that came out like this that would give you that corner come around this side. They only make an inside arc. They do not make an outside arc. So I went and looked at every single die that AccuQuilt makes. And the only one that is close is the pickle dish, but it's still a half an inch short on each side. So it really wasn't going to work. So it's all right. What am I going to do? So guess what? I went back to plan B, which was let's do all the circles in the entire thing. Board back here, this very bottom one that runs from here all the way across behind me and back is my first row I've sewn together. I want to talk to you about how I did the rows and I'm going to go down to the design. In order for me to figure out how it sew it together, I kind of had to figure out how many pieces go in each row and stuff like that. So I printed a copy of the pattern. Um, and if you notice, I have it numbered. If you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm making seven rows. Actually, the quilt goes this way. But if I did it this way, I would have one, two, three, actually this is nine, seven rows by nine. So by doing it the lengthwise, I can do nine at a time and then I only have to put seven rows together as opposed to doing seven at a time and doing nine rows. For some reason, mentally, it seemed easier to me. What I did is the first thing I did is say cut them apart to see how the shapes interact. Okay, and the row you saw behind me, when I just before it was this first row. So all the pieces are filled in at the top, and the bottom has an arc, no arc, an arc, no arc, an arc, no arc. And it goes like that, up and down, up and down, up and down the whole way. Row one and row seven are mirror images of each other and are the same. Okay, row two, four, and six are the same because they all start with a narrow arc and they end in a narrow arc. And then rows three and five start with a wide arc and end with a wide arc. The first row I did was this one, as I told you. And the one I've laid out partially on the backboard and that I have in my place is the second row. Um, I'm gonna put these down on the board and then I'm gonna show you the actual pieces and how we put them together. To do the row two, as we talked about, it's narrow, wide, narrow, wide. So I always start with a narrow piece. Now, be aware there are two different ways to sew these, two different versions to sew these. The rust starting at the top and then the teal. And the other is to have the teal start and then the rust. These are not reversible. If you take the uh, one and reverse it to try to turn it sideways because if you look this way see the way these fit I want them to be opposite and that's the reason you sew it but if you turn this around it is still teal and rust it's never going to be rust and teal because of the order of you sewn them so they are sewn together differently so be aware and you alternate them as you go all of the ones in the horizontal position will be the same in this case, starting with the rust. This is row two. I've already compared it to row one to make sure I'm starting with the right color. So I have actually had to make, according to my little chart, one, two, three, four, five, starting with the rust, and then the teal, and then one, two, three, four, starting with the teal, and then the rust. So I've assembled those nine pieces I've sewn them together and I'm ready to construct them and then every single one that starts with the teal in this row will be placed this way and every one that has the beginning will be placed this way and that is how I'm going to go along and construct my blocks here's another one with the teal in the beginning and if i put it here you can see that the rust matches up and i have alternating colors when we go up to the sewing machine 
we're going to talk about how we sew the two pieces together and whether you're doing rust first or teal first it's the same construction we're going to sew one of these arcs to either side of our shape A and that's all we're going to do and then we're going to put them together as we talked about in horizontal and vertical order and we're going to sew from the very beginning all the way around over to here and then we're going to go ahead and attach this one okay so when we go up to the sewing machine this is going to be row two four and six what about row three well the only difference between row three are the even rows and the odd rows are where you start now when you do row three you got to first make sure that you're matching up the arc which is going to fit here correctly and in this case you're starting with the rust which is very important you're going to put your shape A below it but you will need to put a side arc on this one on the end and let's move these up a little so I'm going to get my face out of that my hair out of here I'm going to move these up okay and so this is going to be get this even here this is going to be the beginning of the next one, right? And we're going to lay this. Now, I'm laying these out before I sew them. And I'm until I know I'm comfortable with a pattern, I'm not sewing anything. You know, I'm an expert seam ripper, but I prefer not to be. So now that I'm looking at this, I have a rust and a teal, I know I'm going to have to put a teal here. And that will close my circle and give me that round piece to start in the other rows. Okay. We've sewn all these pieces together. I won't belabor it. We've talked about putting it together, but what I didn't show you is how to sew these two pieces on to each other. So I'm gonna just do a quick demo on this and then we're gonna go back to sewing the rows together. Sewing okay. the two pieces together is really just another version of what we did inside. Um, it's just matching the curves. I'm always going to put this piece on the top and that's the whole piece as opposed to the sewn together pieces. I just find it easier. And in this case, we are gonna have to match them again. These are cornerstones, so we don't sew into them. And I'm putting it in the corner right here, estimating a pinch seam allowance. Let's look a little closer. I'm going to put it under my presser foot because I don't keep forgetting I have a presser foot put down lever now. And I'm going to take just a few stitches. Just till it starts to sew. Oh, I do want it in a needle down position. Okay. And we're going to go and do the same thing we've done time and time and time again. Let's back up a little. We're going to match. That's the gold. Remember when that we had the two and this is the corner piece. So we're going to put that little notch right there. And I'm going to hold it. And it's just a little bit wonkier than the other because it's kind of a, feels like a backwards curve. But it's not really difficult. And I, again, I'm just positioning. And as you've done before, the fabric just about gets itself together. And if you're having a little issue with this, you can always pull your foot plate up. Your, I always call it a foot plate. It's a presser foot. I don't know why. It's some kind of mental block. And I'll just sew to as far as I can get. Let's go back, match it up, pull this. Now, as I told you, I did that applique, so that's that little piece that's sticking out there. This is my applique here, and the little pieces in the corner stick up, so it tends to make it a little more challenging for me. But, hey, why do it easy if I can do it difficult? Then I'm going to go in and make sure I get this piece matched up. Just It's the same thing we've been doing. It's nothing different. I'm holding it with my finger. I'm making sure that the curve works. And it's sewn on just like that. Okay, let me just do the other side real quick. We'll flip it over. And that side was teal, so this side's going to be rust. 
We just have to do opposite. All right, so now it's that way. And actually what's interesting, when you flip it over, you're doing teal again. So it's just kind of a nifty way to remember it. Uh, whichever side you're doing, regardless of you're doing the one side or the other side, you'll always start with the same one. So there we are. A couple setting stitches. Now, I, it seems like I'm taking more than three, but my machine decides it's a new machine and it likes to take setting stitches in the beginning so it locks my threads in place, which is a blessing and also a curse. And I haven't had the time to figure out why it's doing it. If I can change it, simply because every time I think of it, I'm sewing and I don't feel like stopping. So here we go. And again, I'm just taking the same precautions. I'm making sure it's, you know, turned a little. Making sure the bottom isn't sticking out too far. Oops, that's a little far out. Let's get that back in there, okay. Oh, didn't quite sew to the end. Let's get there. All right, I'm on the seam. And then I'm actually gonna go all the way down. You can see to here. like we did so I can sew off the side and just hold it again no pins <laughs> yay it really saves time plus I don't have a lot of stick marks okay and that is as simple as it is if you do enough of these you get good at it I'm going to turn it over to the design board, let you see it once, and then we'll be off to put okay, it Okay, just a quick together. look. That's what we did. And again, you just start and sew around and back.